Hi, MS Talk. This is your girl, Ashley K, a.k.a. A. We King Angel, and happy Saturday. <laughs> so let's review what we learned last week. We talked about Mr. Rogers and how he taught the world to Tikkun Olam. Remember, Mr. Rogers was also a Presbyterian minister. Tikkun Olam is traditionally a Jewish principle. Mr. Rogers said that we are all called to Tikkun Olam, which means to be repairs of creation. Mr. Rogers said that we need to bring joy and light and love and hope and faith and pardon and love to our neighbor and to ourselves. So if you see that God's creation is broken, it is our job to repair it, according to Mr. Rogers. Today, we'll be talking about 2 Corinthians 12, verses 5 through 10. According to the Endurance Word uh, Concordance, the Apostle Paul wrote this um, message to the Church of Corinth. According to Endurance Word, Paul did not want to elevate himself in this letter. Instead, he was very humble. So let's look at 2 Corinthians um, verses 12, uh, I mean chapter 12, verses 5 through 10. It says, Of such am one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be. Or that he heareth of me, and lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Wow, that's a powerful message. The English teacher and bookworm in me wants to highlight vocabulary words in the scripture. I know that there are a lot of different versions of the Bible. I also agree that it is needed. Unfortunately, a lot of biblical literacy is a problem around the world. I could be wrong, but I think that Harvard's Divinity School has a program that's trying to work against uh, religious literacy. So I think we need to meet a lot of Bible readers where they are by providing different versions of the Bible. However, a lot can be lost in translation. That's why I want to highlight important words in this scripture and their meanings. Later, I will discuss how parallelism is used in the Bible because I was surprised to find out that parallelism is used in this scripture along with the uh, Jesus praying to God in the, in the garden and of uh, the Gethsemane and the thorns that Jesus wore on the cross. And I just want to pray right here real quick because this is like my third or fourth time recording this and it always messes up. So God, please... Help us to get this um, this video um, through to your people. Please let them learn something. Please help me to learn something. And Lord God, we love you. Thank you. And we hope that we have a blessed week next week. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the first word we're going to look at is glory. Um, that can mean importance, greatness, or honor. And the presence of God or heaven. The next word is infirmities. In the uh, King, King James Version of the Bible, the word infirmity is a noun that can refer to physical or mental weakness or moral failing. Next, we have forbear, and this is showing patience or holding back. Next, we have less, and this is a, con a conjunction. So if you remember, schoolhouse rock, conjunction, junction, what's your function? <laughs> so that can mean, uh, that can, uh, this, and this is a conjunction that can mean uh, fear that or so that one should not. It is used to show a warning or a danger that should be avoided. And next, we have exalt, and this is to think highly of or to glorify. 
And in the Bible, we also have the word buffet. And if you're from the South, this could also mean buffet. So we all go to church. Uh, like we go to church and then after church, we either go to grandma's house for dinner or we go to the buffet. But but this time we mean buffet. And, uh, and this is a verb that means to strike repeatedly like waves um, uh, buffeting the shore. And next we have besought. Or this is to seek earnestly. And next we have uh, sufficient, which can mean enough. And we um, we also have persecution. And this is a cruel or unfair treatment of people due to their religious belief or ethnic origin or political views. And in the King James Version of the Bible, we have reproach. And this um, is a noun that can have multiple meanings um, like shame or disgrace. So let's go back and re um, read this scripture. Now that we have looked at these words and see if this has a different meaning for us, or if you knew what all these words mean, meant, just like let it ref like think about it again, like just let it kind of sink in for a second. So of such one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory or think too highly of myself, but in my infirmities. For though I would desire to glory. I should not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, for that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet, to hit me repeatedly, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought, I earnestly went to God multiple times. I besought the Lord three times that he, that it might depart from me, that my thorn might depart from me. Lord God, please take this from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My grace is enough. For thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of God rests upon me. Therefore, I will pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Okay, I'm going to let this rest for a second here. I'm just going to let you all think about it because that is a very powerful, very powerful reading of this scripture. So I'm just going to let you all think about this for a second. Wow. Next, did you all know that sometimes parallelism is used in the Bible? And parallelism is when you have similar words, sentence structures, phrases, or ideas in writing. Now, my dad's Matthew Henry commentary right here, my dad's Matthew Henry commentary um, <laughs> says that, you know, somebody else, do you know, uh, like, show different parallels in, um, in here and show, and show me different um, versions in the Bible that had similar structures. And so, do you know who else prayed to God to have um, his cup taken from him three times? Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed three times. Do you know who else wore a crown of thorns on his head for us? Who else had those thorns? Jesus, on the cross, Jesus had the crown of thorns on his head. Wow. Now that makes me emotional. We always hear that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and was wounded for our transgressions and by his stripes. And these are the lashes when he was whipped. This was the, the whip, the marks, the um, really the wounds from when he was um, whipped. Like he wore our stripes and by the, his stripes we are healed. But it's just hitting me a little differently. Like now I'm getting a different picture because I, I thought about those images. But I didn't, think of, I didn't think about the thorns on his head. I didn't realize he was carrying my thorn. He was carrying my MS. He was carrying your thorn. He was carrying the thorns of the world. He was carrying everybody's thorn. On his head, he was wearing on the cross. Wow. Jesus was carrying your thorn. He was carrying everybody's thorn. And God didn't remove the cup from Jesus in the garden of the Timothy because God saw the bigger picture. 
He couldn't remove the cup because uh, Jesus had to save us and carry our thorns and our sins. Jesus was the son of God and he was called to be our ultimate sacrifice. He was a savior of the world. I would like to thank my mother, sister, and dad for helping me with this video. It could have been out earlier, but I felt like something was missing. And now it's very powerful. So I want to thank my family for that. Um, a special thank you to Matthew Henry Commentary for helping me realize the parallels in this scripture. Have a blessed upcoming week. Um, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also comment if you, if any other words pop out to you or if you would like me to do another deep reading of a different scripture. I love you all. Have a blessed week. Goodbye. And I'm sorry now by the time this video is done, it's Sunday. So happy Sunday. So, pastors, I didn't meet, I didn't do this out of disrespect. I actually didn't want to post on the Sunday because I'm not a pastor. I, I don't have any uh, certification. I don't have anything. I'm not a pastor. So uh, I'm sorry, pastors. I didn't mean to post today. I'm sorry. All right. Love you all. Bye. I don't want to be disrespectful. Please forgive me. Bye.